Okay guys, um, so I wanted to make a real quick video today. I finally have a day where we're not mowing, which is awesome. Um, having beautiful weather, finally getting some rain down here. Um, I want to apologize in advance. I've kind of switched camera rigs and I'm trying some new stuff. So recording on the new GoPro 5 Hero that I just got a couple days ago and trying to use audio from a microphone, um, a lav mic, and then kind of blend that. So the video is not going to be perfect, but then again, most of my audience doesn't expect that, so we're good to go. So, posted a, a quick initial overview of this bad boy Outlaw, um, I think it's the Outlaw XP, or the Outlaw just standard, I think is what they actually call it. Um, it's a 2017 model, it's brand new. Uh, right now, she's got 11 hours on her. Um, I'm gonna upload the video, the original that I made, the initial overview to this channel, this is going up, this is the first official video of the Laid Back Lawn Care channel. But I wanted to do this video after 11 hours, had some mow time on it, uh, kind of compare it to my Bobcat 36 standard, I mean, sorry, 36 walk behind that I had, and the Skag uh, 36 standard that I recently purchased. Some of the likes um, and a couple of things that I wish they would uh, look at. Um, I have done the first oil change on it, so got a little bit of input on that as well. Um, so the reason why I'm making this video is you just can't find a whole lot of stuff on Outlaw or Bad Boy um, out there. There's just a couple videos, a handful of videos. Most of the guys that are using them around here, you see them on Traders, but you see Skag and Hustler around here and then John Deere kind of third. You do see some uh, Bad Boys. Most of the people using them around here are using the lesser model. Uh, but I just could not find any information out there uh, when I went to purchase this. When I called the dealership up, they said, hey, yeah, one guy, um, one guy came in and purchased one, and we haven't heard from him, so we're assuming it's working well for him. Um, so I, had, I purchased this one. They, they did not have one in stock. They had to have it shipped in from um, Bad Boy, which I think is in Alabama, I think, or Arkansas. Um, anyway, uh, did that initial video, and... Uh, you can't find information on the forums because there's just so many people that are very passionate about their brand and really dislike uh, Bad Boy or anything different. You know, to me, I'm not a brand loyal guy. Obviously, I like orange, but um, I want value. And the reason why I purchased the Outlaw Standard is one, I wanted to switch to Standard, and I'm loving the platform so far. Coming from a walk behind and I had a Bad Boy Maverick zero turn before, I love being able to pull up next to an obstacle like a hose or something and just jumping off the back deck, grabbing the object and moving it out of the way. It's great. Uh, you, you can see both sides of the deck when you're trying to get into narrow places. A lot of the lawns that I have have stuff like a garden bed and a sewer clean out and you can just sit there and squeeze right in between and see both sides of the deck at the same time and get right up on stuff. Very easy in houses where you have a house and you have a side yard and a fence that's running along it and you're going into those narrow areas where you may have like a six foot gap. With a zero turn, you gotta kinda look in your back, see where it is. With this, it's just kinda looking down. You can see your platforms and everything. So that's great. So we get the camera real quick. Take a look at some of the stuff here that I actually really like about the bad boy. Um, so obviously grease points and stuff like that, very, very easy to get to um, on this mower. Everything that needs to be greased, um, You've got easy access. Uh, one of my favorite things about this mower is the grass flap. And this is something I really wish Skag, or hope Skag and other manufacturers follow suit on. You know, I personally like to have my grass flap up. Um, you know, of course there's a risk with that. You gotta make sure you walk the yard, make sure there's nothing that's gonna launch out of here. But this allows the grass clippings to be thrown further and more evenly dispersed throughout the yard. Uh, most of my clients are either weekly or bi-weekly, so they're not, you know, very anal about having stuff bagged and everything disappear. And of course, in Texas heat, cutting mostly St. Augustine and some Bermuda, within a couple hours, the grass clippings have dried up and become the size of straw. So I had to cut with it open. But the nice thing about Bad Boy is, now I've got my flap. It is a rubber material. So if you run into something with this, easy to just, it, it folds away. It's not a big deal with that. But I just like being able to sit there and drop it down, or if I want to have it up, bam. I, I don't have to mess around with that. Whereas over here on the Skag, spring-loaded, and I've got to have that bungee cord. So I really 
like that um, on the bad boy. Um, one of the other things that I really like about the bad boy is just the ease of maintenance on this guy. Getting into anything in the back here. Oops. Gotta make sure that cup holder. These things actually have a drain. Let's see if I can show you guys. So, I mean, it's kind of smart just the, the foresight they put into that. You actually have a little drain coming out here that drains the cup holder so it doesn't drain in the pad. Anyway, getting back here to do maintenance on anything, pretty darn easy. Um, as I said in the other video, you can literally look down the operator platform and see the fuel gauge on there, but just most of the stuff is very, very easy to get to. Check your fluid levels, uh, fuel tank, battery, right up in the front there. Just easy to get to, and I like that. The Skag, you'd think, hey, man, this is all open. This is all easy to get to, but it's like everything is blocked by bracing, and it has to be unbolted in order to get to a lot of these control mechanisms and to adjust stuff like this. I had to adjust these the other day and it was a little bit of a pain just trying to get wrenches in there and turn it real slow. Whereas on the bad boy, it is all just open. So this is something that I actually had to mess with since I purchased it. I noticed that on hills, she was backing up really, really slow and weak. And if the grade was, I mean, very insignificant grades, you could not back it up at all. And so had to make an adjustment um, where, as you can see here, there's three different settings that you can adjust these push arms that go down to the, the transaxles. And from the factory, they're initially on this highest setting so that the arm moves the least amount when you're moving that and that's of course going all the way down here and you can see down in there the uh the control arms of course this thing doesn't have auto exposure so it's kind of hard to see but anyway the right one was very very weak um the left one was also weak but not nearly as bad as the right so adjusted took this bolt off and gave myself basically spinning this and making the rod longer or shorter you don't get stronger on both, meaning you cannot, by extending the rod, um, when you're pushing forward on this, to get a forward movement, you're pulling this control rod up. So if you extend the rod and you pull, you're pulling less on that hydro. So you can basically kind of balance your forward and reverse by this. By extending the rod, you give yourself a little bit more reverse power, and by shortening the rod, as you can see there, you're kind of you're pushing down now instead of pulling the rod up. So if you shorten the rod, you get more reverse power. What I found is moving these to the middle setting gave me uh, much more responsiveness in both, and it's been great. Um, one of the other things that I like about this too, the deck, it's kind of, say it's a like, it's an observation, is the, the, the transport adjustment. On this, um, when you lock it, when you let it go down into transport, which this deck is actually at three and a quarter. So when you go to mowing height there, you just it's a quick pull and a quick release, and you're down to your cutting height. And when you're ready to transport, you pull it back and hold it, and you just kind of let it go forward slow, and it locks into there. I do like that. Um, I, I kind of like the skag because it's just it's easier to see. You've got the, the bar. When it's in a mow mode, it's just right there, and it's adjusted up against the stop. And then when it's in transport mode, it just locks back and goes in that detent. Sometimes you gotta finick with this. Now, one thing I'll say that's very interesting is, I don't know if it's because of the position, I don't know if it's the leverage and the way the linkages work um, down on the deck or up here, but I'll tell you, you know, this 54 inch deck with no spring assist and no spring assist I like. I like simplicity, I like less parts, but with no spring assist on this deck, it's easier to lift that 54 inch deck than it is to lift this 36 inch with a spring assist. This thing just has more resistance for some reason than the bad boy does. Going back to the control linkages though, uh, this is my favorite thing so far about the bad boy that I like over the Skag. So on the Skag, basically they use a system, you have a parking brake here, and in order to move, obviously that parking brake has to be disengaged and that switch will come up, which either, I don't know if it completes a circuit or uh, interrupts a circuit, but you've got that sensor there, but then you have to be in drive. 
Now drive, the only thing that does is it moves these control linkages here so that you have free play on this. And all that is is a safety so that this sensor for this drive will not allow the engine to run while this parking brake is engaged. So we have to disengage parking brake and then we can put it into drive. If we put it into drive while the parking brake's engaged, engine stalls. Really don't like that. Skag's really got to do something about that. On the bad boy, what they do is right here, you can see there's an electric sensor right there, a magnetic sensor. And so it can tell, and this is very easy to adjust, this sensor, you got two screws back here on this plate that allows you to adjust that in case it comes out, which I have not had to do. But parking brake here, disengaged all the way forward, engaged. Now one thing about the uh, bad boy is this sensor is ultra sensitive. Um, basically, if it is right here, it's gonna stall if you try and push on these control sticks because it's not gonna, you got to go all the way down, even one click up and it knows. Um, so that, but that's also very easy to access from here. But if it's engaged at all and it senses movement on either one of these control sticks, engine stalls. Push it down, you're good to go. I don't, I love that. I do not like having to constantly shift in and out of drive on this thing to have that safety override. right. So hopefully Skag follows suit, but Bad Boy got it right. Another thing about the bad boy that I do like is these transaxles. Um, easy to gain access to those reservoirs, whereas on the Skag V-Ride, at least this is a 36 inch model, not anywhere near as easy to gain access to that or to check those levels on it. Um, one thing, and this is not so much bad boy as it is Kawasaki, but uh, we've done our first oil change. And as you can see, it's got the little snorkel for the oil, useless, um, absolutely useless halfway useless, let's say that. Basically, this comes down right here underneath the deck. And just, <laughs> you can't do anything with that. You don't want to lift it up over the deck and, and come over here with it, because then of course the oil's having to run over here, you're not getting all the oil out. So what I did is I took a garden hose and cut it about three feet in length, and a, a garden hose actually fits perfectly over that little nipple on there, you unscrew that, put the garden hose over it, and then you can drain the oil out of the front. So that's been great. Um, uh, so cut quality, uh, so far have had no complaints on the cut quality with this guy. Uh, one thing that I've noticed between these two is clipping's about the same. The velocity, I mean, sorry, this is the Advantage deck, which is the lower version of the Velocity deck, and it's the only deck offered on 36 inch. What I have noticed with the Velocity deck is throws out larger clippings. Doesn't tend to clump at all, but throws out larger clippings. But when the grass is really tall, you're gonna have to double cut it with either mower. But with the Velocity, you, it tends to lay down the grass. And I'll have to go back and cut it in a different direction because it lays down that taller grass. The bad boy, no different. You're still gonna have to double cut grass that's 12 to 18 inches tall. You know, we, we understand these are finishing mowers, but this thing tends to get it all in the first pass and just leave scragglers. It does not lay down grass. So I, I really like that. Um, one thing, an observation that kind of eh, is the hour meter on this connects to the engine right here from the factory. And so I'm hoping that that holds up really, really well. Uh, we'll see. Whereas on the Skag, I have no idea where their hour meter connects, but I don't know if it's one of those aftermarket ones or not. Um, actually, no. Okay, so Skag does the exact same thing. Never mind. So that's, that's a moot point. Um, love the tires. Absolutely love the tires on the Outlaw. Um, these are uh, Kendas, and these are 23 inch tall tires, 10.5 inches wide with a 12 inch rim. Love them. Aesthetically, very pretty. Without a whole lot of tire sidewall, uh, they are pretty stable tires. And 10 and a half inches wide, you have to be trying to tear turf. They don't rut at all. By rutting, I mean leaving tracks in the yard over time. And tearing 
when we all sit there and try and do a zero turn maneuver or don't move one wheel and don't do a nice three point turn and tear the turf. Two different terminologies. This thing does not rut and it does not tear. Whereas on the uh, V-Ride, it's got good tires for its size, but it's a heavy mower for, um, I think those are eight inch wide tires. So you gotta be a little more careful with this guy. This one, no problems whatsoever. The one complaint that I have with this mower so far has been the blade clutch. On the V-Ride, you have an Ortega electronic blade clutch. And on the Outlaw, you have, I don't, I don't even know what the brand is. Um, as far as the operation goes, typically, as a creature of habit, I will set the throttle to about 80% and engage the, engage the blade clutch. And then when I'm, ready, when I'm done, bring the throttle down to about 75, 80% to disengage the blade clutch. The blade clutch engagement on the bad boy is very, very abrupt. It puts a lot of load on the engine immediately. Um, you can just tell the engine's hesitant. And it, you know, to me, it's not a lack of power. It's just, it's not a very smooth engagement. It's just a very sharp, snappy engagement. The Ortega clutch on the Skag is smooth. Doesn't matter whether you engage it at 100% or 80%, it's just a smooth, the blades just kind of come on. Um, I'm gonna post some clips here in the video just to show you the difference between the two. So I'll post another video of these guys. Um, let's see, get the camera back up here again. All right. So I plan on posting another video. Uh, people have been asking for cut quality videos. I'm on that, I'll get to that. It's just, I, I, th I thought I was gonna have one yesterday where I had an overgrown property that I needed to do but I came there and someone else had cut the property uh, between the last time I had been there to service sprinkler systems and that time, so it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, so I wanted to get some cut quality videos. Um, I, I plan on getting some operational videos of this, some cut quality videos, this probably combined as one. And then when I service the hydros on it, either film that or just post another update when I get that, that service because I think it should be fairly straightforward on this mower. It's not very easy to get down there to that, but by chalking the wheels and jacking it up, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I could put the camera up, and of course, I need it right back again to show you guys and girls. All right, what I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing on this thing is probably popping off the... Uh, the nice thing about this is open the back panel up, and we'll see. I, I don't think there's really going to be any easy way to gain access because in order to take this back plate off here, and I don't even know that this isn't solid, uh, the, you just have to get everything to these underneath. Adjusting them from the sides isn't bad, but anything else is gonna have to be done underneath the mower. Um, so the skag, you do have access uh, after unscrewing these bolts, then you've got access to your oil filter back there. So I will say at least for this, I think that the, the bad boy is going to be easier because going up underneath it, and I don't think with this camera I'm going to be able to get you guys a good shot uh, of what it looks like up underneath here. But the exposure is probably bad. But it is a little bit easier to get to those. But that, of course that's a completely different system. That's transaxle here and pump and wheel motor there. Um, uh, just another thing too uh, back here. I like this locking mechanism better on this guy because this thing, this thing is just a very affirmative click. I mean, it clicks in there real well. The Skag, I've already had some times where that little spring, you'd think very simple, but that spring sometimes is missed and caught and needs to be adjusted because you can see 
it's just barely catching there. And so I do like that on the bad boy. Um, comparing hydros, this thing has the ZT3400 series hydro gear transaxles. And then this course has the separate pump and wheel motors. Those are very, very snappy. Um, these are soft by comparison. They're great, have no complaints with them, but they're just softer. The, 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 the response is they're not nearly as snappy. In some cases that can make it easier because you don't tend to tear as well. The mower tends to turn smoother, um, but they're that, it's not nearly as fast as the Skag. The Skag's much quicker, much snappier, and just a firmer response. So that's my main overview. Um, the last thing, and this is again just kind of a, a prediction on my part and not necessarily something I've had issues with, but I have a feeling that in the future when it comes time to mess with the belts on this thing, this is gonna be a lot harder to mess with than this because you can see Skag adopted that mentality of a longer mower, which can be a pain in some situations, but the mower is further back, the engine, so you got easy access to your belts here, whereas this guy, everything is right on top of one another. And with certain mowers like a Ferris, it's even more so, but at least with this one, you've got easy access to the engine, but the engine's right on top of the deck. So we'll see how that works out. Um, so guys, stay tuned. Um, let me get this back on there. Stay tuned to the channel for more updates on these things. Please feel free to leave comments um, on the video, preferably constructive comments or questions. Um, my plan is again to do the, an update video on this once I get some more time on it. But if I get a bunch of questions about certain things like cut quality, I plan on doing videos specifically to address those. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys soon.